been running. Hey, well, you know, as we get started here and we f- figure out the topics, one thing I wanted to ask you both was, uh, you know, I've been trying to uh, to do some digital uh, transformation in my own Mac here, and I'm trying to decide which of these, like all the uh, file sharing services that oh. I'm like using. All of them. And so my, I'm, it feels like Dropbox is they're they're not keeping up with the times, so I'm I'm about ready to kick them off. Like I don't want to use them. I'll use them continuously for the show notes because I like that part, but I don't want oh. them anymore for uh, file syncing. I just wanted I wanted to take a quick poll amongst the software defined talk enterprise. What file sharing services? One, what are you using? And then more importantly, what what do you actually want to use? What are you like? What is your if you could use anything? What would you use? Not the forced. Uh, being forced to. So, Coach, <laughs> what, which file sharing services are you using? Well, I have, uh, you know, I work at uh, at VMware, so I have OneDrive. Yep, and, I have as that. As a corporate yep. thing, and and then I mean, you want me to be exhaustive, and then I also have uh, the Adobe Drive because I use Creative Suite stuff. Okay. I, yeah. I don't I don't know if I have that turned on, but like I have it, so to speak. And then um, I don't really have Dropbox anymore, except for what um, for our show notes and paper. We should we need to move off of that. But I know and then, I want to move off that too. But like I think we continue to use paper because it has the nice markup. But we don't have to do any yeah, file syncing. Yeah. It just becomes like a a pretty yeah. editor for us. It's, that's unless true. You know that's of true. a better. Uh, I think I think what we need markup. to do is use we need to use like HackMD or something. And I think I think if we do that, that also means that like other people can participate or I don't know this uh, you you do community management right Matt Ray so I'm sure you can prattle on about community or something yeah <laughs> anyways I, I'll, I'll speak I, I up I have seen hack md yes oh well, yeah, I, yeah, yeah I I'm use just it happy that bit. you you're you're with me then so dropbox we're fa- I don't know well let me ask Matt yeah. Matt like where are you at well and, and then I also oh. have uh I well I have google drives yeah uh, I have that right because yep. we since, since I'm from pivotal I have Google Drive because we use Google. Okay. And then finally, the one that I wish I, that I use and I wish I only used is I just use iCloud because you know I have the uh, please Apple take my money account for the family. Okay, so that okay, so, that's you're very close that. to me. So I'm getting rid of Dropbox. Just gonna use it for uh, that. I do have oh. Google uh, Google, and then I use OneDrive, but I'm just making that a work thing. That that's good for the office. Mm-hmm. So it's really mm-hmm. down to iCloud, which I use. I've already paid for, or Google. So. So now, Matt. Now, now this you're the third wheel here. So we're going to share software defined talk information. Are you? What are you using? Are you? Are you a Google person? A Dropbox person? I can't imagine you're an iCloud person, but I guess that's possible. I'm all of the above. Well, I'm not one box or. Okay, I'm not <laughs> box.com. Is that a thing? I'm not. That. Yeah, you're not box.com. Okay. No, nobody's that anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. What and, happened to those? And you're those not people? OneDrive. It sounds like you're not a Microsoft. I'm not a Microsoft. Person. Okay. So now so, what? Okay. What are you left? So we're left with um, Google. Go ahead. My yeah. My wife and I have been using Dropbox forever. Uh, what was that? Uh, yeah. That was just some volume I messed up. Everything's okay. fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we are now. Uh, a hundred percent Apple family. Um, so, uh, we have five iPhones, five Macs, and, uh, I added the iCloud and nobody uses it. <laughs> well, they'll use the backup, right? They'll use uh, backup maybe, for sure. maybe, oh, yeah, I don't definitely. know. Like yeah. it's, it's so freaking obtuse. I was like, okay. Um, I, 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 I pay for I bet this. you're all using the backup. You don't even, they don't even know they're no, doing it. No, no, no. ICloud I, I, backup? I, went, I, I went to photos and I was like, I try to like tell it to back to iCloud and it grays out. I don't know why, but I mm. still, I'm still getting billed. It still shows up in like the, the system settings or whatever. And there's like 23 gigabytes of storage are used instead of like the 200 that I'm paying for. And I, and I, I started with the 200 plan knowing that I'd probably go up if everyone like started backing up their photos, but I don't know. I invited the family. I think my wife declined the invite. You know, it was just like, whatever. Well, you should definitely, everybody, <laughs> that's, that. this is a little get ahead of it. Like you should at a minimum, the photo is kind of different, but like just make sure everyone's backing up their phone to iCloud. I mean, if not, because that's the way you want to like back, restore all your new phones and stuff. That's like, yeah. Well, I yeah. You, so I got to think you're doing it, but or the, I don't know. I have to go back and look because I think it kind of almost does it because everyone gets five gigs bought for free. Yeah, and it'll yeah. just turn on. So you def- definitely, I don't know. I would definitely. All right, so I, I got the new iPhone here. And mm-hmm. hold on, wait a minute, before we get off that. So, okay. So now the three of us, okay. How should we share docs? It sounds like it's either Google Docs or iCloud. What's wrong with what? Oh, I don't care. 
Matt, that's there, true. that's I don't know. That's a dangerous I, position I, to take. I've never heard that you can share docs in iCloud. I did what it. Do we, I've done it the other day, but but I'm a little bit suspicious that, of it. I've that done it seem with with uh, natural. <laughs> natural. <laughs> it's against nature's way to remotely share files with people across the planet. Nature does abhors that. Is it the, now? Is this another side project you have with like uh, Brian Gracely? We're, we're going to start using iCloud to share documents. No, I'm just trying to get rid of Dropbox off my computer. Oh, okay. And we That's have—I right. don't know—you probably, you guys probably don't look at it as much, but we have some. We have a software defined talk folder that's Dropbox that we share. I, and yeah, I just yeah. sort of like I want to get rid of it. That's the last thing I have. I've gotten rid of everything else out of well, Dropbox. So yeah. I want to get rid. I want to. So I mean, so this is what I want to do. I either want to move it to Google Cloud, yeah. right? Yeah. Or I want to move it to Dropbox. But I was like, I don't know. What do you what What do you each use or want to use for for share? But but is this is for our show notes? Yeah. No. 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 The show notes will remain in. Oh, that's going to yeah, stay yeah. there because it has the the one feature that Dropbox yeah, yeah. has okay, is markup. Okay. But everything else, there's all these other, you know, various documents. We, or we you should know what the fact that you're saying that maybe that means like you don't even care about those files, and maybe I should just be like I no, can just move you those know, whenever I want. We should just we should put them on iCloud. That's that's where they should go. All right, iCloud, Matt, you're in with that iCloud. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, and I, yeah. I mean, I think, I think, uh, yeah, you see, so, you know, you get the Apple one as noted here in the comments. It is, it does seem expensive, $30 a month, but you just get everything and two terabytes for your whole family. It's great. That's I think the $20 get. thing, I, I just have the 200 uh, gigs, 20 bucks. It's perfect. I mean, I think yeah, yeah, yeah great yeah, deal. Yeah. Depends yeah. on your size of your family. I only have three, three people on it. So we still got about 50, 60 gigs of unused storage in there, which is great. Yeah, yeah. my family is exactly past the free limit. <laughs> and now, and then, and then, of course, of so course, when, right? When I migrated from Dropbox to iCloud, here's here's another little tip. You reminded mm -hmm. me of this, Brandon, is like, we use OneDrive at VMware, right? Yeah. So I had, I had been, uh -huh. I've been storing like all my podcast and video production stuff in Dropbox, which is a lot. And then I realized like, ah, those are work things, so I'm going to store them on the work drive, and that freed yeah. up a ton of space. Yep. You just drag that over there and go on a long dog walk and come back, and then you just yeah, no, like, I'm totally with you. It's, it's I like all, you know OneDrive. I think it's kind of nice to have like it all all your work in one segmented thing. So that part is, I mean, if there's something I like about it, it's probably that. But I think it's it's about to have problems though with this new mac os upgrade update. It's going to like mm -hmm. I don't know the file syncing is not going to work as well. So hopefully they're really? that out. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, huh. that's hence and, my and Dropbox is going to be even worse. So this that's this is my uh, end of support, right? This is like yeah. this is just like Windows ninety uh, two thousand eight. It's like all right, it's time to get off this thing once and for yeah. all. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, all right. That was good. Can we put that as the uh, the the after show? Sure. Uh, bit sure. Uh, very lengthy. That would be fun. <laughs> and join us in the after show for an extensive discussion of file sharing. All right. Strategy. Hey. Just before uh, we get started here, um, just one ad break. So wherever you feel good, Cote, as always. And okay. then another thing I learned last week, Cote, I don't know exactly how you did it, but I'm just going to ask you not to do it again. Somehow you joined the audience. Remember, like you were like, hey, I'm going to show you this thing. And then somehow you joined Restream again, right? And it okay. was like, a, and then I added, like, I think I added a camera to you. And it was okay. like, and you were like on there twice, but it kind of messed us up. Like it gave me like two audio chunks Oh. of you so oh wow so well, whatever I, you were doing like, I'm, I'm not i'm not gonna do anything don't maybe do I would, that again i think i was sharing a screen yeah but somehow it was weird i don't know what happened there i don't know why i it looked, it looked huh. like you were like a fourth user but it looked like your audio was the same so it was, was very there. confusing hmm. luckily i've only recorded hmm. this seven different ways so i had plenty of backups to make it but just <laughs> just don't okay. do that whatever it was you were doing please don't do that <laughs> <laughs> whatever that okay. means that would be a good t-shirt whatever it, whatever it was you were doing even, please don't well, do I, that I, I was a witness to it and i even enabled it i even like clicked on it thinking like it would yeah. be no problem but i was like oh that was not smart that was not a good idea yeah so. okay that sounds good i'll just uh unplug it and plug it back in see if that <laughs> exactly all right anyhow, now i'm ready right. any anytime you guys want to start <clears throat> training as always i like to sometimes use does that make sense as always i'd like to sometimes in high school I had this phrase uh, that, that my friend Mason, who I think both of you have met, uh, he noted several times that I'd use this, and I said, uh, it's a small abundance, which I guess is that, is that that's a paradox, uh, I think. Is paradox what you use to describe contradictory words in a phrase or, or not? 
I'd think of it as just a very difficult problem or question, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess I would fall into the category of it. I don't. I don't have my strunk and white uh, handy. Anyways, uh, well, I almost forgot what I was talking about there. I dug down into a hole so deep. Oh, E.B. E. E. White, strunk. Yes, and white. thank you. I like to use. Uh, I like to use this time every now and then to get some advice. Now, I I've gone back to reading three dimensional books. Uh, you know, paper, paper book. Paper books, yes, uh, rather than flat ones. Paper which, books. yeah, which which the the disadvantage you you if if you may not realize this if you haven't read uh, a, a paper book in a while you actually need light to read it that that is a requirement <laughs> which that's that's you know it's 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 interesting because I started reading it and I realized that like we've kind of built our life around the assumption that you don't need light to read a book right so we don't have bedside lights or anything like that because. You don't need them anyways. I want to get some advice. I started reading uh, Confederacy of Dunces, which I've never read, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm about halfway through it. And I feel like I'm going back and forth about if I should keep reading it because it's very well written and uh, it's it's entertaining. But I'm just not sure that right now in my life I need such like negativity and cynicism and sarcasm, right? Like I feel like I feel like I'm pegged out on that in my own head. And so, but I don't, I, I mean, is this, this is, so this is my question is, is like, is reading a book, is that going to, uh, the, the, the content of the book, is that going to affect my mood or am I going to be able to just handle it and I can just go through the, <laughs> the other 150 pages or so that I have? Uh, all right, guys. Well, the clock's run out on your therapy session. So let, let, let's get down to this. Um, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I, uh, as, <laughs> as someone who's been, in a fairly negative space, uh, off and on, um, I would avoid it. Right. Uh, mm. that's, that's yeah. me. I, I got enough negativity already. I don't need more. Um, so, uh, I'd say stop reading it. I mean, okay. And, and okay. do you feel like it's when you finish it, are you going to be like, whoo, check that off the bucket list. Right. Or yeah. You, no, you know, I don't know. I think the I, very nature, the, the fact that you're asking the question, I think this would be the true therapist answer. The fact that you're asking the question probably reveals it. Like if you are stressing or even contemplating the fact that this book is maybe going to either bring you stress or has already brought you stress, I think sure, like you can sure. safely say, put this one on the shelf, pick I it think, up at a, late, a later date uh, in a time that you're in a better headspace to enjoy it. I think, I think, I think, okay. Okay. I think, I think you both are onto something. And also uh, I think, I think your phrasing there, Brandon has given me a great framing of how to further excuse not starting an exercise regimen. Cause I have <laughs> a lot of doubts about it. And I Way think like, do, should I st keep doing this? Uh, or, you know, should, should I do it? And like, I think uh, as, as a therapist would say the the fact that you're answering this question, Wait, the fact sure. that you're asking this question answers sure. it already. I'll just say, though, Dr. Skateboard would probably uh, give you different uh, medical advice on the working out. So, so it will. Yeah. I guess it depends on exactly which kind of doctor you see. So that yeah. could be yeah. potentially contradictory uh, type uh, of, to, or to, to, to the earlier point, a paradox of advice. <laughs> Wow! Look at that. Brandon gets the, the cut off. Oh, I got the cut off. There you go. Paradox of uh, paradox of advice. Like, is that is that what you audio editors call it? The uh, the cold close. What is the? Uh, I wonder what there must be a name for that. Um. Well, that's sort of the end of the cold open, but I don't know what. Uh, I don't know. That's true. That's why I call it the cold close. Cold close. Yeah. I don't know. You're. I, let's call it the cold close. I like it. All right. Uh, our friends this week, uh, go see our friends at Strong DM. They'll help you log into everything, let you do whatever you need to do, and go to Strong DM slash SDT. And I just part along. Wow. So we really got to, we got to drop reading that book. Okay. The, my only issue is I don't know if I have a more positive book. Like well, we can I, talk about it. Maybe I was going to put it in listener uh, feedback. Did you, did you read all six of the Dune books? No, I just I, I got into the third book and I was just like, God damn it, this again. It's just yeah, like, yeah. I, th see, is... I, I finished the I just finished the third one and I was like, I don't need I don't need three more. I'm done. Does, does, is that the one where the guy turns into a worm or some shit? Yes. Like, like it's just I don't like ruin it. I haven't read any of the books. I'm okay. still, I've only seen the movie. Don't, it's no just spoilers. A, really? That, you have a, yeah. The, the first book is is great, and yeah. the second and third one, if there's some good stuff in them, but. You you if if you get a lot of momentum from the first one, you'll probably push through. But 
Yeah, that's that's what happened. Is is I, I I was coasting off of that, but then but then it just bogs down. It's just such a self important. Listen, as someone who's only seen the first Dune movie and absolutely loved it, and this I'm just talking about the recent one. I'm like, yeah. wow, should I even bother reading the books? Because I, yes. I should I just go with the movie vision? The book, I I, I've I read really the book. like the movie. You know, I've now read. I hadn't read Dune for like 20 years, and um, I really enjoyed it. So and yeah, yeah, yeah. and and and. and I'm also like one of those weird fans of the 1984 one, and so you know. But uh, I, I would say definitely All right, read, I got read the it. first I book, a... and if 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 you're like jazzed about what's going on, you know, the second one has some really cool stuff. The third one has some cool stuff, but it's just this diminishing returns, you know. All right, I got it. I have it on Audible. I just haven't. Oh, time, that, so. that's not even, man. That that's yeah. Your therapist would say listen to an audiobook. All right, I'm in. All right, I'll get on that. I'll get on that. <laughs> uh, perfect. All right, Kote, whenever you're ready. All right. Well, there's a bunch of earnings out again, and uh, you know, I was I was reviewing the uh, the excellent list of material that our community here collects together in our Slack channel, which you can join it's if you go to softwaredefinedtalk.com/slash three four two, or just go to softwaredefinedtalk.com and click on the Slack link up there. Everyone's always nicely cataloging stuff. Uh, you know, I was I was thinking on that topic. I, I still subscribe to a bunch of RSS feeds, but like the tech news ones that I read, like there's very little crossover with the stuff that people find and post. So I don't know. Maybe I should subscribe to less tech news feeds because they're not really good anymore. I don't know where the tech news is anymore. I just, I can't find it. I'm in some parallel dimension. It's in software to find talks. Like. <laughs> That's right. Anyways... So I was looking through all the earnings uh, posts, and it's just like I, you know, uh, you know, Microsoft makes a ton of money here, Google makes all this money here, and they split their stock. Everyone, everyone's make even Docker's making tons of money, yeah, relative to to nothing. And uh, and then of course Apple makes lots of money. And and I was I was scrolling through it this morning. Was it this morning? Yeah, I think it was. I was I was a little too hungover this morning. Uh, but I was I was reading it and I was thinking like I don't know what to do with this anymore. It's no like kidding. I'm going to see another earnings thing and it's like oh look they made fifty billion dollars, things are going great. And so mm -hmm. I think I think maybe I think Brandon you might remember some sort of uh, 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 bias or thinking slow fast name for this or something. <laughs> but I feel like that we need to switch the earning things to be like I only want to hear when it's bad. If it's good. Well, but I can e skip it. Even when it's good, it's bad. I mean, I, some you know the stock market's like, well, sure you made fifty billion dollars, but we wanted fifty one. Oh, and yeah, you yeah. know, or or like you know, Microsoft reports earnings are up and their stock price drops. Nobody's sure why. It's like <sighs> it's priced. It's priced in, Matt Ray. It's priced in. That's right. That well, that's the way. I guess the reason I kind of put these in here, or the reason I kind of, if you will, I think once a quarter, it's good looking at it is sort of. Uh, just kind of the old like red, yellow, green kind of thing. So what mm. I think we care about is change. If something changes significantly in any direction. So yeah, in the case yeah. of Microsoft, I, I would just say, you know, it's very much what the story we've seen before. So I would say the notable thing here is like nothing changed. Microsoft is you're still doing well, probably on a run rate of around 40 billion. So that's firmly second. AWS will announce uh, later this week. So they'll probably be at 65, 70 billion dollar run rate. That'll be you know, that was to be suddenly a lot higher, a lot smaller. We'll take note of it. But otherwise, that's about the same. And then yeah. Alphabet, you know, of course, Google huh. Cloud is about, five, you know, it's about at a 20, 22 billion dollar run rate. So so I think the thing that's notable is just like nothing's changed. Right. So it's just like, at least in the cloud world, those three large well, companies yeah. continue to do what they do. No, we're not seeing any significant change in there. And I think we probably would only care in a, a new way of we're like, wow. Microsoft's overtaking Google, AWS or Google's overtaking well, Azure, they're, or they're, vice versa. Some or IBM or somebody fault comes out of nowhere. <laughs> then, then we'd suddenly be like, wow, that's, that's true. That, I, nobody, I think, I think nobody's that. talking about IBM. Um, I, right. I, th I think that's right. It's monitoring uh, the change that's like uh, out of the ordinary that at this point becomes uh, yeah. more interesting. It, it's, it's, a, it's a slow moving horse race. And, but, but like the narratives are kind of set, right? It's like, AWS is the, you know, the gigantor and Azure is, you know, slowly eating into their market and, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. getting closer and, and Google 
it has passed this threshold where like nobody really thinks that they would shut it down because they make so much money. But you know, they're they're the the strong third. And yeah, the nothing about the earnings has refuted that narrative. And you know, so we're like, well, what do we do with this? Not much, right? Mm. Yeah. Now I do think from a macro to like put on our macro uh, stock market hat is like Obviously, lots of stocks in the stock market in general, depending on where you invested, um, many of them are down. Certainly, some of the, like the high growth companies like Zoom and uh, lots of I know lots of that. They've they basically significantly um, taken big hits in their valuation. So it's interesting here that like whatever we want to call these, like the big three, and you can throw Apple in there. Just that these like the mega mega caps for the most part they've held up, right? Like their stock prices aren't down quite as much, and their earnings are as good as ever. Now, of course, a lot of the earnings stuff are outside of cloud, right? You know, Microsoft's office business and operating systems is doing great. Alphabet's doing great in advertising. Um, Apple's doing great on everything. You know, even Matt Ray went in for a full enterprise purchase. He went with four <laughs> iPhones, four or five iPhones and a couple laptops this year. So, so I yes, think it's four just laptops. from a, a, like the macro state, it's just like, wow, the biggest companies in the world continue to do great. And while some of the smaller companies, even even if they're really big in market cap wise, are still uh, are not experiencing the same kind of growth. So that's kind of just interesting. I guess it's just sort of like, you know, it's it just pays to be like a super successful company. Right. It seems like none of these companies <laughs> can be stopped for a while. And it's also interesting, I think, because they are tied to cloud, but just like they all have these huge profit senators outside of cloud for the most part right so that's also yeah, kind of yeah interesting yeah. um so so you know so i guess you know the news right is maybe just current course and speed nothing's changed good to know um and then of course you do have something like the docker thing i thought was kind of interesting the fact that they got to 50 million arr i mean that's sort of like going on the opposite side but i mean that's pretty impressive i mean i think i don't know i'd kind of written them off as like you'll never hear about that again so i know they've completely revamped themselves and it's a completely different company but that's impressive, right? You don't see a company necessarily rise up for like a second act. Now, I don't think they'll ever get to be, you know, where maybe they once aspired to, whatever that, you know, Microsoft uh, offer was for them. But they definitely have built a really solid developer business, at least I in the know. near term. I, I, you know, is it, is it 20 to 1, the, the unicorn status marker? Uh, what's what are you talking about? 20, what, <laughs> 20, 20, uh, 20 X sales makes you a unicorn. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I guess you're what, like, what are they built? Yeah. I mean, are they at a yeah. billion dollars? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah. Good question. Good question about like what Docker's overall valuation is. I don't think it's that big, but maybe we'll see. Well, I think, I think Brandon, after, after that explanation, I think you should start doing like daily, a week daily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you need to do like a, a, a three minute on Twitter, just three minute close of markets commentary. I, I think, and, and maybe just, right. just, you don't even make Everything's a chart. The same, right. Everything's just, the same. And you just need to, uh, you just need to have, have a chart that's kind of like the movers that comes from somewhere and any, uh -huh. or, or actually just set up, just set up, uh, um, you know, the software defined talk, like a uh, tech pack and, uh, <laughs> a five just, minute thing. You can probably do that in Google Sheets. In fact, I know you can. There's, you know, there's a macro to look up share price, so you can just uh, flash that up and just give some commentary and, then and uh, be out every well, single day. I thought of you, Cote. <laughs> I I heard this um, this explanation. So I like there's just various like people that do multiples. Like you know what 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 mm. should the multiple be? We talk about that all the time. So I was listening to this other podcast. Can't remember the name of it now, but this person said all um, all valuation is is you take basically the current revenue right and then you multiply it by some story and that becomes your your multiple that's it right so it's that's just pretty good and i was like and it's like i mean because he was a very advanced investor and they, but the way he broke it down i was like yeah that's really what all it is it's just about current earnings times a story right gives you the multiple of what this should be and the story can be and if the story is this is going to grow forever and you know, and people believe it is going to give you this high multiple. If the story is we actually believe the company's going out of business because something's going to happen, it will give you kind of a negative multiple. And I was just like, I just thought it was a very simple but very powerful way to think of it. It is, it is kind of the story you tell yourself about the company or the market tells itself, and that's how you get to a multiple. So um, I don't know, maybe that's like because it came from such an experienced investor. I was like, wow, that seems like. Like if I just thought of that myself, I'd be like, "That's stupid." But the way he said it, I was like, "That's great." I was like, "I totally bought off on that." So, so it is. It's just the story you want to tell yourself or tell the story about the company, 
Um, and if you believe the story is undervalued, if you believe it's going to grow a lot, that's why you would pay, you know overpay for something. So see, see that that could be that could be in your three minute commentary. Yeah, right there. there you go. What's but the you 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 would, you would start off and be like, oh, I'm Brandon Witchard with your end of day market report. And because uh, you'd start talking like that. And then and then, uh, you know, once you introduce yourself, it'll do that that kind of like that thing where like the screen changes and there's some <laughs> chrome thing that like right. rotates and flashes. Needs a sound right? effect. Yeah. And then yeah. and then you're back on. You're like you're like, you yeah, know, movers whoosh. and shakers. And yeah, then like and that. then there's another whoosh. And it's like and it'll be like Brandon's take. And then it's like. I heard on such and such podcast that blauation is revenue times story. <laughs> there you go. It would have been stupid if I said it, but it sounded pretty smart coming from him. Well, it is. Once you start to apply that, then you can apply it to things you see. Because like this week, everyone's really down on Facebook for probably lots of reasons that people already know about. And so they got crushed, right? The, the, the story times Facebook's earnings, not good, right? Yeah, you know, people, yeah. people don't like it. And then whereas all these other companies we went through, people like the story, like especially Google. It's like, yeah, that advertising search business, pretty great. So Apple, same thing with Apple. If Matt Ray is buying five iPhones in, in one quarter and you know, he, that, you know, that, that is yep. a good anecdotal sign that the story yep. behind Apple is good. And just think of all the people, uh, maybe we'll play this in the after show, but we had an extensive discussion of file sharing services <laughs> and, uh, think of all the people who listen to this podcast who are now going to switch to the, uh, the Apple plan. 20 to 30 dollars. Sorry, box. Yeah. Yeah, I I forgot about them. Box they 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 were like the big enterprise uh storage Zoom people. box can, can be yours for a song. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that th you know, looks like looks like there's a lot of valuation out there. You got your stocks, stocks going up, stocks going down, stocks all around. That that would be my guest commentary. Maybe I'll come in <laughs> I'll come like, in and then you're like, and I'm out, and like, damn it! Now I got to come up. I got 24 hours to come up with another like useless sentence. <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. Okay. I, I, I any anytime there is a uh, anytime the market is closed because of a holiday, I'll be your guest, uh, your guest video person. You know, so it's kind of it's in depth commentary. Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like the um, you know the Economist has this like weekend edition or something that is just like I guess it, whatever. It's the style section when, when uh, there's no business <laughs> business living <laughs> that's right uh howdy gentlemen have you considered shoes with no laces let me tell you a little bit about that as a lifestyle yeah well uh, speaking of lifestyles <laughs> yes so it, it looks it looks like uh out there in the world there is still a lot of pondering of what to do about uh security and open source software and uh i didn't go read it but I, I think there was a it was it was just the week where there was a Wall Street Journal opinion piece by by big tech people, Eric Schmidt and someone else. So it's we're, we're getting like uh, getting lots of visibility into this, and you know people are doing things here and there. Stocks go up, stocks go down. Tide goes in, tide <laughs> goes out. And I, I you know when I was when I was thinking about this this morning, I was thinking, you know, and this is this is especially especially good product management stuff is, is what, and I don't mean this in an expansive useless way, but like, what is it we collectively think needs to go on here? Because I think people want their software to be more secure, right? Yeah. But, but what that means now you've, you've product managed a few things here and there, Brandon, and I know you, Matt Ray, you, you've planned things <laughs> in your life <laughs> and made trade-offs. <laughs> Not as much as you might think. Yes, <laughs> But, you know, if you do more of one thing, that means you do less of another thing. So I think what I feel like maybe what people are saying is like, let's let's have a few less features and instead have more security. And like, is everyone cool with that? Because we've kind of been existing in the software world with like, we want to maximize features and then clean up the mess afterwards. But maybe now there's a shift going on that like, oh, we're willing to sacrifice features uh, cause, cause we want the security. Ahead I, of time. I, I don't, I don't know if it's sacrificed so much as bringing awareness. Right. So I think, mm. I think right now there are a lot of people using a lot of software who don't know what their problems are and they wait till, you know, there's a fancy new web page that announces it. And then they're like, Oh my gosh, let me go look and see what we actually use. And what I feel, you know, people are trying to do is like, all right, we need to set up foundation 
and they're going to go and see what open source p software people are using. And we're going to pr proactively go and kick the tires and look around at this stuff. And, you know, they're already, they're already like CVE channels and stuff like that. But I think my, my take on this, or at least what I want it to be, um, <laughs> maybe I'm projecting here, is, is, is they're, they're going to go and say, like, what kind of software do people use? Who's responsible for it? And, you know, is it actually being maintained? And mm. but even like that log4j thing, people are just using an old out of date version. But whose fault is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I did think, you know, Coach, we had been talking about it and uh, somebody pinged me in the side, Chris over at uh, CTO over at uh, uh, what CNCF and other things. You know, he's he said because you know, we were talking about like, gosh, it'd be great if like there was some, you know, something set up. And of course, like like everything it's like turns out there is so. The Open Source Security Foundation, I guess, has been out there. And I guess this week, or I saw this announcement um, pretty recently here, and it says that they've started the Alpha Omega Project. So it's kind of interesting that the theory behind it is, I guess, the alpha part of it is that they're going to essentially, you know, if you will, work with the maintainers of the most critical open source projects to help them identify security vulnerabilities. So that's sort of step one is, like, what's most widely used mm -hmm. and providing mm -hmm. some support around those most critical uh, open source projects and get them, you know, if you will, secured, at least, you know, doing all the best practices. Or at least then, find, finding who's responsible for them. Yeah. That, I, I think that's been a problem for some of these projects. Well, this one on the alpha, if you're in the alpha category, I think it's not only is it finding that, but it's actually do it. Like I read it as like offering really. Trying oh, yeah, to help, yeah, like yeah. I mean, having I, someone do it. You know, and I, then the, identify and then make sure they're, you know, financially compensated to maintain this yeah stuff. do something right and then the omega side of it uh you know i didn't come up with these names so it's i guess it's fine but omega it's, is it's part of the project is uh they're trying to identify <sighs> kind of the long tail so up to ten thousand widely deployed open source projects so there's i guess committees that are going to ultimately determine like which bucket you're in but at least you know on these ten thousand, i think the goal there is to provide some level of automation and security analysis for kind of the long tail project so at least you know you you can get some of these long tail projects doing, you know, if you will, the minimal or the basics of security. Um, so I thought that was like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess it remains to be seen whether or not like this will take hold, but I thought like the idea behind it was good. You know, this idea that like, Hey, there's critical uh, projects and there's kind of the long ones. Now, you know, it's like, I don't know if we consider this good or bad. Microsoft and Google are both supporting uh, alpha and omega with an initial investment of 5 million. I think that's a total investment. So I think it's 2.5 million for each. So I don't know. But I mean, in on one hand, that's a lot of money, depending on how you look at it. But at the other hand, it's like the problem is so big that, you know, maybe that should be like, could you put $50 million in here? Or is that crazy talk, right? Around having people really do it. But but at least you have a centralized place where people, because I think as we talked about last time, Coach, I know we, we mentioned it's like, hey, you know, a lot of times people don't really need the money. They need people helping. So think of this money as actually yeah. funding people to go become a maintainer and do all the security work. Like, I think if we got to that level, then maybe we're getting to the point that we really are securing things. But again, time will tell. I mean, Microsoft and GitHub, you know, same, same ish company, but, um, you know, them throwing $10 million at it, that's great and all, but like GitHub's already got a lot of automated tooling and, you know, it, it, if the, and, and GitHub is well positioned to go and identify, you know, 10,000 ish projects that, you know, are, are popular. And, but the, the problem is like, they can, you know, sick these automated tools on things and it sends a whole bunch of like, oh, you know, this code needs this and this and this, but whether or not the maintainers pay attention to that is kind of the problem, right? There's already a ton of freely available tooling that will give you all sorts of warnings and, you know, highlighting syntax and, you know, potential, you know, issues and stuff. But it's like, that's just adding overhead as a as a maintainer you know yeah. is it something you actually want to follow up on do you do you care enough to do it you know um yeah yeah, yeah so to Hopefully your point you Don, do. i think <laughs> to your original question because i think i think and it, i think it begs the question what matt you're saying there is like that's good Th this infrastructure is good but like you still at the end of the day like somebody has to make it a priority and has to really care yeah. and 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 you can't just just funding i mean i'm talking not just about microsoft google but like as an industry just trying to write a check and then make it someone else's problem right that's where the problem is right you have to like at yeah. some point you have to say i'm willing to manage a team i'm going to put some people on there that want to be maintaining the software and they they completely are okay with being compensated for doing security stuff like at some point somebody has to do that right and that and until that, that happens 
nothing really will change. Well, and, and there's going to be have to be some sort of you know support organization that you know okay we've got our ten thousand projects we're going to go and identify them and you know the first hundred we've identified the maintainers been in contact with them they're cool they're like we got this thanks for thanks for checking in and then you're going to have this whole list of like well the next thousand there are you know these projects we can't find anybody for them you know or or the maintainer like blew us off or you know you know they they took the repo private or something and so then you're like now what do we do and, mm. and so there's this whole like triage support organization that has to be like well we have to identify a new maintainer or you know mark this project as you know like high risk right or that's the first thing or high risk yeah yeah, yeah. For, the first step would just be awareness like this is a high risk project just for some of the reasons you outlined and then if and then say like hey if if people care right then some to your point like someone to maybe fund it or or find someone start doing some type of recruiting let people know that hey there is an opportunity here and find someone that has interests aligned but, but that's but, a lot but, of work in itself yeah well that, that's a ton of work and and you know kind of interesting work uh as far as like community outreach and stuff goes but then the question is like what do you do when you get to you know like the the recent uh uh what was it the color js guy uh you know who kind of yeah, belligerently like uh -huh. yeah, yeah yeah do you fork stuff under the under the banner of the open ssf and and you know this is the this is the new way <laughs> you know do, do you're like well that maintainer can't be responsible for their own code we're we're mm. we're taking it as uh they've the, got the wrong new, thought <laughs> the new hosts yeah well, i i think i think maybe what you know i think the fat five million might be enough to like set up like if you commit to the top 500 open source projects you can enroll on your birthday, you'll get like a free uh, USB C cable sent to you, but you have to sign Branded. for it. you have to sign for it at the door, so that at least once a year you'll know that this person is alive and you can verify their signature. And all it costs you, and this isn't like the full on data USB C oh, cable. It's like a gas fantastic. station USB C cable, and that way you at least are collecting that the person's alive or not, uh, and and is at some domicile or, or address. <laughs> You've got a mailing address. It's fantastic. I love it. I love your uh, in-person uh, verification <laughs> idea. Yeah. Well, I, you know, so I guess we'll come back to, I think the only way this ever gets the money it probably deserves is if someone connects the dots between pick your latest out, pick the latest vulnerability, Log4j, or I think something's even newer. I forgot what the name of it is. But um, if someone drew the connection was like, look, look how much money we spend after the fact as an industry. However, it's probably hundreds of millions, billion, depending on like which one, it's a lot, right? And I think unless someone connects the dots, like, hey, we can either spend this money in a huge sums after the fact, or we can you know, proactively uh, do some of this up front and save ourselves some money. So until someone can kind of draw that line and make that case to a bunch of executives that want to fund this, like it's yeah. tough sledding here for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I when I was thinking, you know, it's uh the analogy doesn't work very well, but like when uh, when everyone decided or was forced to put like car seats, car seats, car seat belts in cars, like that, it seems like a similar thing, right? Because like it seems like, I mean, I wasn't really alive at the time or <laughs> cognizant, but like cars didn't used to have seat belts and then i think like you know everyone freaked out about safety not really security but a similar thing and now all cars have seat belts and you know in order to do that i don't know what they call them at car companies but the product managers there had to be like well i guess we're not going to uh work on smoother fins this year because we got to spend all that time on these goddamn seat belts and how to like <laughs> latch them into the car and and I, w I was going to have like the uh, the color design people come up with a new color for the uh, the hubcaps, but now they got to figure out what color these seat belts are going to be. And so, I mean, you know, you got limited resources, so you make a decision not to ship a feature that have this <laughs> well, uh, the safety the, the, thing. But 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 the 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 more telling thing is everybody knew it was a problem. And right, right, just, and and, that's, and that's, they're that's, like earnings says we're not going to focus. Right, on that. and and, we're and so that do it. And, that, and like that's, I said, that's more like the real industry. Like like I like I was saying, the the analogy is not great. It's just like it was oh, reminding great. me of this <laughs> in the sense of yeah, exactly. Like everyone knows security is a problem, but they don't they don't address it. I guess. Well, no, it's you just I said think that. it's kind of fascinating you're talking about because I think the story of seatbelts, as I may get someone wrong, is that Robert McNamara, I think before he got into the government, he worked at GM and they did all this like statistical analysis of everything. And so anyway. I mean, he calculated the human cost, the basically the number of deaths from um, 
from not, you know, not having uh, seatbelts, right? And so that's where, where it all came from. And then they finally got uh, it in. And, it, and then, you know, it's, it's attributed to saving, you know, millions of lives at this point, like a lot, right? And so, but it took, I mean, even with uh, life and death on the line, right? To your point, Cote, it still took a while for it to actually happen. So it's kind of a good, I don't know, it just kind of shows you even when all the data uh, makes it an obvious choice, it's not, it's, it doesn't mean it just happens. And there's probably lots of current examples that we won't get into that you can yes. think of. I mean, yeah, the same somewhere. thing. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess, I guess the other, yeah. the other blocker is just inertia, right? People yeah. prioritize inertia as like, why, why do anything? Boy, as I get older, that that's, that's my, my motto. I have that tattooed on my forehead. <laughs> why do anything? Why do anything? <laughs> do less. I like it. <laughs> why does anyone do anything? <laughs> on a special nihilistic episode of SDG. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, uh, just as a brief mention, you know, if, if you listen to this show, you, you might be interested in the long history of, of software stuff. It, it looks like Citrix is going private, and they're oh. going to be combined together with uh, Tibco to... Uh, have some kind of synergies we'll just move on from that uh, see how that goes you, but but the the best part of that acquisition is tibco citrix are now a superpower located under cloud.com that's yeah. right that, that is the funniest thing <laughs> that is, i wonder that is the best. Do they still own i guess we'll quickly check it as uh i see citrix must. still owns they must. cloud.com that, i mean that's a great yeah it is it's citrix workspace is where it redirects do you, do you know do you know that our, our old friend peter ulander yeah. he he credits me with with uh coming up with that idea I remember I was on I was on a call and he's like, we don't really know what to call this thing. And I was like, you should just call it cloud.com. All right. Well, something. I'll invite everyone to go listen to my interview with Shannon Williams, uh, who uh, it's in the back catalog, who was there as well, where I asked him explicitly, who, where did the cloud.com name come from? And well, I believe at this point there are 15 different uh, people that uh, lay claim to it. So, Kote, I'm adding you to the list, right? That's I good. Think, that's good. I think Hinkle's in there. <laughs> I think uh, our uh, friend of, from Sun, I just forgot his name, I, the, the C, their CMO at one point did it. So, so whoever did it, good job. It was a good, yes. uh, a good idea. <laughs> and, 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 and may this, you know, Unholy alliance of Citrix and Tibco weigh on your soul. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like takes credit for that. No one takes care, credit for the actual uh, the, the actual underlying products at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, ah, yeah. oh, no one really yeah. talks about that. They're just like, but let me tell you the story of how I got cloud.com, yeah. how I figured it out for you. Yeah, so. yeah. They're, they're, I, I like I like the idea that there's more people who claim to have had that idea than there are characters in the domain name. <laughs> <laughs> It was a good. It was a good name. I'm. I'm surprised if it was, was it available when you were talking about it. Like no, no he, nobody he had, uh, registered it. That's he had, he had to. He had to buy it from someone. But I think he yeah. got it. Got a got yeah, a yeah. pretty good deal. I just clean my. I think it's Peter Ulander. Was yeah. That was yeah. There was you the go. Yeah. So that was yeah. he was uh, the other person that I think was mentioned as yeah coming up with it. So I don't know, but it does. I do think you. That's a place I normally dismiss all of this, but I'm like. I think that company is worth half as much if it's not named cloud.com. Just, okay. I don't even know what the number is anymore, but I'm just like, just that's a 50% discount because you came up with some like arbitrary name that didn't have anything to do with cloud. Now, I mean, and, 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 and as, uh, as Facebook has shown, renaming something bad can half your stock price too. <laughs> true. That's true. It can go the other way for you. Absolutely. Yeah. This is just a dumb idea to rename that company. It's so weird. It doesn't make any <sighs> sense. Yeah, uh, and that too. Well, and, and then and then I think I think another another uh, the Tim Bray didn't didn't yes. he invent XML or something? I I, I just he something invented like all that. all sorts of good stuff. And the uh, but but he he had a uh, he had a good write up that I think the three of us and other people who go and visit people to discuss their cloud strategy it's it was both delightful and a little painful to read. But his writing style always makes it nice and easy. Yeah, he's he's like. He's like he'll take some some topic, except when he said he didn't why he didn't like Amazon anymore. Just kind of covers it in that that friendly Canadian white chocolate coating makes makes it go down. <laughs> white chocolate. <laughs> yeah, what's up with white chocolate? I I think I looked up that white chocolate isn't even really chocolate or something. It's I forget. Right. Yeah, but he he kind of he kind of I think he kind of threw uh, threw it all together there. Just uh, he's got a good take on like your multi cloud thinking, and I think it's basically whenever you're building your cloud stuff. Let me see if I if I took notes extensively enough that I can remember what it was. I think basically he said, unless you're at a startup focused on growth, you should favor using the open source components that cloud vendors use, but you don't have to. 
it's just nice to like <laughs> you should you should try to more or less like it, again it's fa- I use the word favor you should lean towards using things that are based on open source things and standards because it'll be slightly easier to uh, move them uh, if if you're worried about lock in and his point about the um, the uh, the high growth startup was that like you should totally just use whatever cloud you want and be all in on that one cloud because you you as a high growth startup want to like uh, move fast as they say mm-hmm. and uh, not have to worry about like uh, long term problems in the present the the net present value of lock in I think is what you're focused on uh, and so instead. Because you're a startup and you're looking to grow your valuation, you should just like never mind lock in and all those other things and just build fully yeah, dedicated that, on the one that's stack. That's not a problem, right? And and I like you know because uh, you know one of my one of my uh, acquisition strategies, uh, uh, cynical ones was the uh, was it the no no I forget but you know it's just like yeah sure like how you're profitable is your acquirer's problem not yours. Mm-hmm. So like, basically that's, that's a good, a good way of passing down the, uh, the tech debt that you have, but it's true. It's also like, sometimes you don't have time to uh, worry about the future. Well, he sort of addresses, I mean, to your point, right. He sort of addresses what happens in his multi-cloud statement. Cause I thought this was just, this is just sort of like the life I live. So I thought it was great. And he basically, when he talks about multi-cloud, he just says, you know, first let's establish this a fact of life, more or less every large enterprise, public or private sector is already multi-cloud or soon will be. Why? for no other reasons m a and i think that's, that's right. i mean like to me it's like exactly right that is i mean nobody starts out trying to like necessarily use everything but to your point they buy a high growth startup that is all in on a platform that they may not use and suddenly they're multi-cloud so so i think is his point there you know very well taken yeah yeah i mean i mean you're just in a large organization that's not a tech company you're just going to end up with a bunch of stuff in, in uh, more traditional industries. I mean, I'm sure even Amazon, maybe Amazon is really great at this, but they've acquired lots of big companies and they must go through all sorts of... Uh, and I, I, there's probably people right now who are like, those goddamn Whole Foods ERP people. And, and, then, <laughs> and, then like, and then like the other direction into Amazon where the Whole Foods people are like, our, our POS systems are great. We've been making money this whole time. Why do we got to do this thing? And yeah, then, you know, yeah. Well, it, probably the worst would be Microsoft acquiring mm. game companies, right? Because yes. those game companies, you know, they're they're going to be really focused on ex- you know getting the most out of their client server connections. And so, a lot of times, what happens in game companies is you know the the servers are written in whatever the clients are in. So you know, there's a lot of Windows servers running behind the scenes for game companies because the clients were Windows, or you know, or they were Xbox, and you know the the you know, the servers were Xbox, Um, which meant like, you know, you have these, if you were acquiring a game company and you weren't Microsoft, you were now like, God damn it. What are we doing all these windows servers? (laughs) Where where are we going to run these, you know, cost effectively? But when you're buying a game company, like an Activision, you're buying, you know, dozens, if not hundreds of studios who all have their own boutique ways of doing things and to try to encourage them to, you know, use the same backend, you know, they're, they're, they're pushing some of them are pushing that problem off to you know middlemen and there's a lot of middlemen software in, in gaming but you know it's that's a that's a morass to untangle you know that is that that's going to be a fun one for activision you know because it just meant that like now microsoft is a large amazon and google customer by mm. buying activision now, now i want to throw out a couple more i'm i i with all of this i'm not i'm not seeking i'm not summarizing what what old tim bray there is saying I'm just kind of telling you my, my thoughts and reactions, what are you evoked in my mind. And there's, a, there's two other things I think that are worth, worth uh, going over. Well, first of all, we can, uh, let me summarize. If, you, if, you're a, if you're a high growth startup, just go all in on, on one stack. Let me put it yep. that way. And then if you are a, a large, gigantic enterprise, you should, again, I'm going to generalize it, you should try to use standard things when possible and open source based things, but you know, they don't have to be perfect in open standard. It's just like, you want that flexibility. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, and then the, the, the kind of, um, seasoning on that, so to speak, is that like, you have to ask yourself, do I care about the world in three years? Probably maybe five, but if, if you care about what happens three to five years out, then you need to like, think about like 
options and multi-cloud and stuff. Otherwise, just just go full bore into there. Who cares? Which, you know, that's a way of operating is fine. And then the other thing that I think that I, I forget if he explicitly goes over this, but it was making me think that like the other thing is in an, in a large organization, let's call them an enterprise, it's it's good to think about the the productivity of your people, like the cost uh, that that you're trading off with your decisions, right? Like, so you know whether whether you make something on your own or like you go all in on one thing because it's integrated and works better together or whatever. Like that's always a consideration to uh, to float around. Now, of course, as a vendor, that's what you always want people to consider because it's a very squishy, weird thing, and it's not just uh, a price on on a piece of software, but I've noticed that people who think a lot more through uh, how 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 it affects the way that people work better, they they think a lot differently about their strategy. And then finally, he raises an excellent point, almost almost single handedly dismissing the ages old exciting uh, theory of of data gravity. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone really throw any shade or refutation on it, but it was it was great. He used all his authority and his intuitive argument to be like. Yeah, you know, data gravity is a thing if you're like a spy agency, but like, I don't even know if you could consume that much inf- petabytes of information faster than you could transform it, you know, it, faster than you could apply analysis on it, which was an interesting idea of like, well, sure, you're going to have petabytes of data that are locked into some cloud, but like, how much analysis are you going to be doing over all of that stuff that you couldn't just like wait a week to download it or like, you know, ship a hard drive somewhere? Is, is is that really a concern? Do they do they have a, a an outbound <clears throat> an outbound snowmobile project? I mean, you know, can 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 I call up uh, Azure and be like, can you uh, drive over to Amazon and truck over my stuff for me? My stuff, you know, can, <laughs> my stuff. <laughs> can, can can you do that? I mean, I, seriously, is that like is well, there I think a, I a, a slow I, exfiltration system? I think it's more uh, maybe saying asking your question a slightly different way would just be. Does where you want it to go have a snowmobile type project? And I think the answer to that is, I think a lot of places would come up with some solution to help you truck the data right, out right. if that's but, what but, you needed to. Mm-hmm. But but do the do the public clouds offer exfiltration as a service? You know, do they? I mean, you know, other than their various, you know various security holes, do they do they allow you to you know back up a, a tanker of uh, for and, and you know siphon off your data without having to pay massive exit fees? You know, because right now like egress over the internet always expensive right so, so the question is you know is there a way to get you know a cross cable connect between uh probably you can find some intermediate middleman like an equinex or somebody who will you know do those wires for you and you yeah. know they're not paying microsoft and they're not paying amazon you know the fees you would get it's probably a business there you probably you probably need some sort of 5g connection I think is, oh, is what, that, what you're looking no, for. No, we're still talking lo- hard lines, hard lines, coach. Well, mm-hmm. maybe this is an interesting point, Matt Ray. Maybe maybe data gravity is not about time; it's about network egress charges. Like so, so yeah. it's like oh, it, that, that's yeah. It, it's it's less about time and more about charges and inconvenience, right? So you know, physically having to take stuff offline that's inconvenient. Um, you know, being able to you know replicate your data o- over the wire that's what everybody wants but are you going to get charged out the wazoo for that and my guess is there's probably some creative ways you know through peering to get around some of that but yeah yeah they probably won't gonna need a cloud like, economist you probably can't just go to the the data center and bring an ethernet cable and plug it in somewhere right well they, but that that's literally there. how snowmobile works for inbound right yeah. <laughs> you know you're like uh i i took your data thing and now you're gonna go plug it in and it's gonna show up here for me i feel so i feel like, like i feel like back in the 2010s in that that weird era of cloud there was at least one place of this notion of like you could go to their offices and have like faster direct. Wasn't there like a Google City hub thing? I, I, like- I worked with a a, a data, uh, you know, an early big data startup that literally on Fridays mailed hard drives to Amazon. Like the you know they yeah. this was pre snowmobile whatever. There was you know a FedEx guy or whatever came by and took a box of hard drives and shipped them to Amazon. You know, and so they had a service there for you know literally three and a half inch physical hard drives were, were going to Amazon every week. And, you know, Amazon turned that into a snowmobile, but um, yes, 
uh, maybe you know, maybe it's because we were in Austin. They couldn't drive to the Austin offices and plug in. Yeah. So but, you're, you're, you know, so snowmobile only. There's no reverse. It, it only has a. That's forward. what I'm. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That you know, they probably don't make a you know, uh, sandmobile or whatever. Now, how about how about if you use that outpost thing? Isn't that that's edge computing, right? But that's Maybe. going in. Everything's meant oh, to like send stuff, in. you know, hmm. to the cloud. Hmm. No good. Hmm. Well, How are we, we going to get our little, data out? As I said, we're getting a little feedback. It does seem like if you've got the money that uh, oh, Equinox yeah, the and money, other uh, large telcos will let you do um, a cross connect for a fee. So probably depends if that fee is worth it or not. Probably depends on you know well, the level of scale of your enterprise. So probably not something that like. You're gonna do just for you know over the weekend for, uh, but something that maybe you need in place for a while to get a bunch of this data out. Probably you know well, it, it I mean, definitely a sounds like it's a done. lot of data. So yeah. uh, you know how 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 fast can we ex, ex? What's the cheapest way to exfiltrate a petabyte? That's the real question. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, and I, and also too, it's just like what's like repeatable, right? And if you're doing this a lot, like or I don't know, just, or maybe not repeatable, maybe it's just sort of like has to be done in a way that you feel like you got all the data. But I think all of these points that you're making here is sort of why, when I read Tim's part there and I liked it, I was like, I don't know, all this fud is like why people won't do it. It's just like it kind of scares everyone off, right? It's just like, yeah, I don't need the data now, but maybe I'll need it later, or if I don't have it, I feel like I'll put my job in jeopardy, <laughs> or Sure, I could do all these things, but wow, that sounds complicated. Like, how do I do a cross connect, or how do I do a snowmobile out? And it's this. It, it, it sort of like makes the argument that these are the reasons there's gravity to that data, right? It's like people don't want to have to deal with these problems. Yeah, yeah, you know, I yeah, yeah. I I, I think I think what I still like about what he points to is like, and and then you know, make sure you're considering how much data you're talking about and what you're going to actually do about it. Yeah, D do with it because like. Like, I mean, I, I uh, recently, you know, I've been spending a lot of time using just hunting around when I should be doing something else in like Salesforce and Marketo. I just got access to that. And I'll tell you what, that data it moves slow as shit up in those clouds. <laughs> like, it's, it's funny, like you try to do some reporting in either of those and it just takes forever. And then you go to like Google Analytics super fast, right? So some, somewhere like if, if, we could, if we could move that data off, maybe they need to move data off of their clouds onto some other cloud to be faster because boy so slow and uh even if you're just searching for like 90 days it's super slow no good well we've got any bureaucracy this week brandon we do have a few things um one i want to let uh tim uh, tom know that i sent him some stickers he's up in kansas city so uh happy to send him some software defined talk stickers if you'd like software defined talk stickers all i have to do is email me your postal address at stickers at software defined talk.com be happy to send you stickers anywhere in the world and also you know we don't talk about this one as much but every once in a while we just get questions questions about the show questions about life questions you want us to answer for no reason other than you want someone else to send it to questions at software defined talk.com we I always enjoy hearing what the listeners want to know more about. And one of the things uh, we I found in the Slack this week was uh, Brian recommends uh, the book Amp It Up. This is uh, one of the books, I think, written by uh, our friends over at uh, Snowflake. Anyway, about, I think, the CEO there. So he recommended it. He wants us to read it and maybe review it like we did uh, the uh, Amazon book. So I don't know. Should we read Amp It Up? Let me know if you think it was a good book. We've also talked about reviewing, uh, was it Hit Refresh? Microsoft book. So I don't know. We'll have to decide, Cote, Matt, which one of these uh, we're going to actually take the time to read or or mm. if or if we haven't found the next book. Maybe maybe we need more recommendations on what we should be reading. I, th I then, think I think both of those we could extract what the story multiplier is like. Yes, the, uh, that will be. Uh, <laughs> well, that's going to be the name of our book. Story multiplier. Done. <laughs> done and done. Um, and then finally, we're on the fun side. Uh, there was a fun poll in the Slack about uh, it was the question was, how hard should you work your last week at a job? So there was a poll and there was a nice, healthy discussion on, I think there were four options. One was like, work as hard as you've ever worked. Two was like, yeah, you know, uh, you know, just kind of the general, do your normal thing. Three was like, don't pull a hamstring. And four was uh, just play video <laughs> games. So there was uh, a lot of uh, fun discussion on that. So I won't re recount it here, but if you care about that, you can go read about it in the Slack. What, what's, the, uh, what's the Australian practice there? Uh, in, in that in that culture, Matt, right? <laughs> they, uh, well, uh, there's always the phrase "chuck a sickie," so you know, um, pull uh -huh. a sick day or two. Uh, I don't know, you know. Um, I, f I feel you know, like I feel like the proper answer with the Australians would be like, "I'm going to work as much as I worked every other week 
at this job. <laughs> they, they, they are known for their work ethic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> their life ethic. Yeah. Work ethic. Very good. Uh, well, there's, there's some conferences. Uh, there's, if you go to softwaredefinedtalk.com uh, slash 2342, you can see the details. There's that conference. It's been rescheduled to be at the end of May. There's also a call for speakers open for their Wisconsin one. And there's some call for, uh, for speakers. I don't know what slash papers is. Like, are, are you going to submit a paper to it? But I guess that's what a CFP is, right? It's not call for people. Uh, for DevOps Day Chicago and uh, Birmingham there in Alabama. And uh, we're, we're finalizing the dates for our spring tour conferences. I'll, I'll have to go over those once we uh, get them sorted out. And uh, let's see. With that, Matt Ray, what do you have to recommend? Um, well, uh, one, one, I don't know if it's a conference or not, but I am starting to do uh, <clears throat> live stream hour or office hours for, for Trigger Mesh. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, you Twitch lovers out there will, will tune in and, and uh, watch me futz around with Trigger Mesh and, you know, installing and, and playing with uh, open source software. That's always fun. Oh. Um, Playing. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, the idea is, you know, we'll un- unveil some some useful stuff, and and people will uh, start solving their their business problems because mm. you know all this talk about moving data around—that's what Trigger Mesh does. Yeah. You know. But uh, anywho, my my recommendation for this week, I I got uh, I, I've been watching this show on Netflix called uh, Living with Yourself. It, it's not new. Uh, Brandon's probably recommended it already. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's about uh, uh, Paul Rudd um, as uh, he accidentally clones himself, and um, it's it's a comedy, but also uh, I haven't watched the last episode yet, so maybe it's a horror story. I don't know. You know, mm. it's uh, it, it's got a little bit of sci-fi to it, so it, uh, I'm enjoying it. Um, we'll see how the ending lands. That's the problem with all these, right? Is uh, mm. how do, how does it land? But I'm enjoying that for now. Well, uh, yeah. Also, uh, I, I think we found out that the listeners should also tune in to the first part of your office hours to make sure the mic is working. Right? <laughs> hey, <laughs> the, the first one was you know we 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 worked out the bugs. Yeah, yeah. live live streaming is difficult. I tried to do yes. some live streaming in the kitchen today, and it was it was just not just problems, just always always problems. Well, but we're yeah. sorting it out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's fun stuff. Well, uh, how about yourself, Brandon? What do you have to recommend? A couple things. First is I want to uh, recommend uh, a Datadog dashboard this week that I've been using today. It's, uh, it's been icy here in Texas, so of course I'm very concerned about the power. So some enterprise uh, Datadog user, uh, I think it's uh, Daniel Lamando, if I'm saying that right. He created a whole Datadog dashboard that tracks ERCOTs uh, up to the second, if you will, utilization of electricity. So I've had that up today just to make sure I'm aware of any potential outages. And so uh, I think it's a great use of Datadog. Not a sponsor or anything like that, but that's great. And I guess, you know, I, I would expect there to be the open source Graphite version available, but nope, it isn't. It was just a Datadog version. So they good got job. Free tier, man. Free, <laughs> free tier is practically open source. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> good job, Daniel. Keep up the good work. And then um, I think a lot of people have probably heard about this, but I didn't, we didn't get to it in the show. But I just uh, I really enjoy playing Wordle. It's uh, the game that's uh, probably annoying your Twitter feed where everyone posts their results. Muted. And I think it's, it's a fun little word game. It's, you just play once a day. And then, of course, uh, you know, who doesn't like an overnight success story that the New York Times bought Wordle for low, I think they said low seven figures. So congratulations to the person that created this game as a side project and then stumbling into uh, what's a probably a pretty good uh, payday. And I don't know. We'll yeah. have to see. We'll have to assume what... Uh, hey. He got I had to use Amazon valuation. or something. Yeah. Go ahead. What was that? I was just saying, like, he chose the right time to, you know, exit. Like, you strike while the iron's hot, you get that money. Um, yeah. You know, you're, you, there's no day two IQ for you. And I think it's going to fit right in with all the other New York Times word games. There's the crossword. I forget the other one. It's like a beehive. I don't know. So it's fun. So I like it's it. Wordle. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I see some people in the Slack playing it, or I, I see them posting on Twitter. So it is fun. And it's just, and it's also pretty short because you just play once a day. And then, you know, just that's it. So very simple little game. So check out Wordle if you haven't been inundated with it already. 
Well, hopefully, hopefully they'll be expanding into uh, uh, enterprise infrastructure podcast and news. Hey, looking, stay in your lane. Stay beef, in your lane. No, That's they right. were going to beef up their portfolio with with That's right. Well, we can oh, okay. negotiate a a low seven figure payout, I guess, is if if need be. Well, I think it'll it'll need to be a low uh, eight figure payout because each of us, because that was only one person, right? <laughs> yeah, we all want seven figures. Okay. So we're basically like, I mean, that. So you you've established that one person is worth low seven figures. So we are three. So now that's that's the, that's our story, and that's why there should be a multiple. All right. Well, that's that's back to the multiple. It's uh, story times. Or it's earnings times multiple. Oh, well, I don't have any. Well, don't we have earnings. We have a big story behind it. So I like yeah, that. Yeah, we've got great Good earnings. Good momentum, Brandon. I mean, absolutely. D- yeah, I'll always always uh, uh, cagger or something. <laughs> well, uh, I, I have a, 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 a my recommendation is a uh, as a podcast. Uh, called uh, you know you know that Rand's guy I I don't really know what yep. his name is but he has a podcast with some other person I actually haven't done the research to know who they are which is fine I got stuff going on in my life and uh, it's called the Important Thing Podcast and for some reason I think it like sprung back to life like over oh, yeah. the last six months and so it's fun it's like uh it's it's like it's like old school podcasting where where just two people kind of talk a little bit about nothing and uh, every now every now and then. They make it. They make a big deal about a, a big big deal about nothing, and then talk about some relevant things every now Drunk, and then. Drunker and retireder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're much more professional and uh, you know more polished. It's good stuff. But you check that out if you want some soothing people talking about nothing in the tech world podcast. Well, speaking of soothing podcasts, you have been soothed by another episode of Software Defined Talk. You can get the show notes for this episode episodes if you go to softwaredefinedtalk.com slash 342 and uh, check out everything we got going on there and you know like and subscribe bye 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 all right all kids right. don't get themselves to school by themselves hey, right in the slack slack me the email address you used to sign up for icloud because that's what i'm going to do to invite you to the new software defined talk shared uh, folder on icloud okay. Sure. All right. Same thing with you, Kote. Yeah. Just uh, slack it to me that way. I'll do it. So. Slack it to me. That's or like right. laughing, or, or right? Or just announce it to the world. You know, I'm sure you want to give your email address out to like your person. Yeah. And just give me the password too. Just you know, like laughing. So, uh, all right. Yeah. That, that's going to be, uh, that's our data gravity. We're going to see if we can transition from uh, Dropbox to iCloud. We'll see what kind of data gravity we have going I, on. I could, now, in my understanding, I could send you my password because I have two factor authentication. Which means that my password is useless, right? <sighs> That's yeah. the theory. Well, it's just it's it's one of the factors. Then I'd have to just get your phone or something or be around mm. you. Um. All right, Matt, you have to go. Yeah, gotta go. All right, streamers. Bye. Thanks, thanks everyone for hanging in. We'll be around next week if all goes all right. well. Later.